My name is Ryan Rodriguez. I am a senior engineer uh, at Airbus here in North America, particularly Airbus UTM uh, on the platform team. Today, I'd like to talk to you about something that we're experimenting with, uh, building a multi-tenant data platform with a Sura GraphQL engine. So a quick overview on what we're gonna cover today. Uh, we're gonna talk about digitization. Uh, platform for UTM services uh, UTM depends on uh, digital future. We're going to talk about the need for shared data registries, uh, essentially how UTM uh, develops its picture of the world. Then we're going to move on to our first iteration, uh, first crack at uh, knocking out data registries for these shared sources, what it looked like before and after Hesera. Then we're going to talk about schema extension and how we use that to implement uh, some more advanced geospatial cases. Finally, we'll be open for Q&A. So to recap, uh, again, I work on our, our platform team. Basically, our uh, prime directive is to build up the tooling and infrastructure to support uh, the next age of avi avi aviation. So we want to build out all of the necessary infrastructure uh, to support the services that are going to uh, make air travel safe in the future. So uh, maybe to back up a bit, what is UTM? Uh, UTM uh, is unmanned traffic management. Uh, you may hear this referenced as UAS traffic management by other agencies like NASA. Uh, in the Airbus case, it's, it's generally redundant, so we drop the UAS. So what do we need UTM for? Uh, well, the current airspace is a very human-centered process. You've got pilots spending lots of time talking to control towers. They're developing their picture of the world uh, by a, essentially a phone communication. As we integrate small vehicles, urban air mobility vehicles, this becomes really untractable. You can't really have a safe airspace if you've got unknown variables, uh, essentially entities that can't talk back to you uh, and respond to human commands. So we see the need uh, for digitization is not just for scale, but for safety. These types of services will also be used uh, to support single pilot operations. Uh, like I said, pilots spend lots of time talking to this hour. Um, that's one of the main reasons that we need uh, multiple people to handle the aircraft at a time. We believe these digital services from internal and external domain experts will enable the next stage of flight. We want to support these activities. So a bit about some current UTM uh, platform services and maybe some planned ones. Uh, so one we've got in production now is Lance. That's the low altitude Authorization, authorization notification capability uh, that's supported by FAA. Uh, so part 107 drone pilots today can use our service to uh, get special authorizations when needed for certain, certain flights. Uh, basically how this works is they log into our UI, they submit their flight plan. We run all these safety assessments, rule checks, make sure they're in compliance. And then we submit that to FAA and coordinate that authorization. In the future, uh, for safety considerations, we need flight planning and deconfliction. Uh, so today, all deconfliction is line of sight, talking with the tower. Uh, in the future, we can do a little bit better if we know where everyone is or where everyone plans to be. We think about risk assessments for these flight plans. Uh, essentially, does your flight um, uh, put people and property at risk? Uh, what is the likelihood of, of uh, loss of life in catastrophic events? We can also think about vehicle databases for uh, essentially recalling performance characteristics for vehicles that ties into the risk subnet above, weather services, terrain services, Guys, the limit. So 
So I mentioned briefly the need for a global picture of the world. Right now, pilots get that from control and just what they can see with their eyes. The idea of UTM is based on shared data. So small vehicles, uh, autonomous flights will submit flight plans to, um, to, a, to build a global estimate of, of the world and where everyone is. Uh, so these types of capabilities depend on shared data, uh, shared data sources that will support multiple services. So some examples of this kind of shared data are uh, pilot registries. Uh, you want to keep track of pilot safety certificates, uh, what their track record has been. Uh, I mentioned vehicle databases previously. Uh, you need to know the performance characteristics for certain vehicles, battery life to properly estimate the risk. We need a global registry for flight plans so that we can properly do deconfliction. And we also need uh, shared data for flight restrictions. Should an emergency arise, we need to open up the airspace to first responders. These types of flight restrictions are what we're talking about. So in its simplest iteration, the reference architecture for us looks something like this. Uh, we use the tried and true Postgres. We'd have some type of query API that would manage uh, our authorizations, role-based access, access control, and then services would interact with this query API. So in a picture, this looks quite simple, but in practice, uh, building out from scratch um, uh, really fully featured role-based access control would be a lot of work and mostly boilerplate type stuff. Not working towards the core directive, which is to enable uh, these digital services. So one of the requirements is that we support many services. So that implies uh, a form of multi-tenancy. One way to do that with Postgres is soft multi-tenancy. You can have a single database with multiple schemas. Uh, the schemas correspond to the individual services. Uh, this allows us to do joins out of the box where if we took a harder form of multi-tenancy, we would need to do a little more work there. Uh, so some questions arise around the query layer. So we would need a custom solution for RBAC. We also need a custom discovery service. So how do new services discover what data are available from existing services? After some digging, uh, we stumbled upon Hasura, sort of by luck. We saw that we could get a very performant GraphQL schema uh, from our existing Postgres backing store. We saw that it did uh, RBAC, so we'd get that right out of the box. Worked well with our soft multi-tenancy model. An addition in this architecture would need to be something called the data plane. And the data plane uh, essentially is an interface between the services and Hasura. Um, when new services come online, they declare the data that they're going to use. Uh, if that's not already tracked in its corresponding schema, we go ahead and do that. We also handle uh, for new services, they need, to handle, they need to get new roles for RBAC. All of this has been kind of managed with the data plane. Uh, you can imagine this kind of lines up with other types of declarative infrastructures. Declare the data that you need, the data plane will make sure that Hasura kind of lines up with your, with your needs. You know, and also above service one that I've got something called an Apollo extension. Uh, I'll circle back to that later. <clears throat> so in this version two, we don't need to worry about authorization and uh, a query API that, that works with our RBAC. This kind of just happens out of the box with Azure. We do have uh, some work to be done in the data plane. Uh, 
but generally the Hazard API is very friendly. Most of the operations that we need uh, to map to, uh, map one to one. So this is kind of just a state comparison, uh, ends up being some state comparison logic. The things again that are being managed here are, are creating new authorizations and roles. Uh, if a declaration contains a table that's new, we track it. Of course, pruning old ones. Uh, this layer can also handle things like the uploading of data resources if those uh, don't already exist in Postgres. So the Apollo extension that I told you to remember. Um, for, for a lot of our cases, uh, we're doing kind of intensive geospatial queries. Um, these don't always map nicely one-to-one -one with a uh, GraphQL query that Hesera can generate. Uh, of course, this isn't like extreme cases. Uh, you're doing something nasty like this. Uh, say you're selecting some variable from, uh, from a table of say flight restriction geometries. Uh, we would, with uh, raw SQL, do something like we want to simplify the geometry and then take the convex hole often with some other shapes and rules. Um, so one way to uh, kind of seamlessly uh, make this work with, with the service on top of the GraphQL schema that Hasura makes is to use schema extension. So you could use any uh, GraphQL server that supports schema extension, we chose Apollo. Uh, tie this with the deployment of the service and you point the Apollo uh, server at your Hasura uh, API. Essentially you can add these functions uh, in a custom resolver uh, right on top of your API without too much work, uh, ends up being uh, just a few lines of code to support these types of geospatial use cases. So uh, quickly to recap, uh, life before and after Sura. Uh, before Sura, we weren't really uh, able to focus on development of tooling. Uh, we were sort of looking at a long development cycle to develop this RBAC system. Uh, to even to get up to parity with something like Azura, we would need to also build out our own dashboard for the management of this. Um, at the end of it, we'd only be able to query with a SQL. Uh, we'd also need to think about, uh, in the support of multiple services, uh, how regressions can pop up. So one service needs to update a model. What happens to the existing queries or model set? other services uh, are using. Uh, architecture with Hasura, we're completely freed uh, basically from thinking about RBAC. Uh, these fold uh, basically very easily into uh, the data plan implementation. We get a complete GraphQL schema right out of the box. And of course we can still uh, query with SQL. Uh, Hasura has a great new feature around generating regression tests uh, from real users, from real uh, queries uh, that you've got in your production code. Uh, so this uh, definitely helps out. And of course, we were freed up to work on uh, product development and tooling to kind of make life easier for us.